nothing else in life than pool. Play pool, play pool. Hello! You have been waiting for this, uh, haven't you? Finally, time to run the rack. Without any skill at all, only using the brain. Only planning ahead the rack. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Two boys are problem. Okay, two is in a tight place here. I see a line here. This, this is where I want to be with the cue ball. Okay, but the problem here is that I don't need to draw back straight for, for the three point. This is a very difficult shot, very difficult shot. And also very difficult to get into the angle for the two ball. It's a, it's a very tight, very tight area here. And very difficult here. I need to draw back the cue ball perfectly for the three. And how do I get from the three to the four? How can I do that? This is going to be a night, nightmare rack right here. How can I get from the three to the four? I need to be perfect on the three ball here. Then with a little angle, I need to go to the right here. He'd be here on the four, and then a nightmare here. How can I make the five? So I, I don't like what I have here. Okay, I don't like it. I have I have ball in hand now, of course. Otherwise, too difficult. So what will I do here? Uh, I need to uh, fix the problem. So I, I'm going to go this way. I will go this way with the cue ball, okay? And hopefully I will move the four ball into a, another place, if I'm lucky. But uh, if, I, if I'm not... Uh, if I'm not lucky, I will be okay because I will get position of the two ball. So actually, here is a better place. You can see, if I go one rail here, hit the rail, I will not have a proper line to be able to hit the four ball. You will just hit the rail here, there. But if I draw back the cue ball here, the cue ball will start the line from this place, and it is going to be able to hit the four ball. And because of a curve shot, a draw draw curve shot, it will, the cue ball will go to the side and then it will, it will start curving back. So the line, line towards the four would actually start here, from here, if I draw back and try to hit the four, okay? And uh, if, if I hit the four, very good, because then the four will come further down here. And then I will have a st stop shot of the four and then I can make the five into the, into the side pocket. So that will improve my, my, my position on the table. And after I hit the four, the cue ball will stay here for the two ball, okay? For the two ball. And then, then I, can either, uh, I can either hit the five, okay? I can hit the five when I'm on the two here and move, move the five further there. So I will enable uh, the five to be made into the corner pocket over there, which was previously impossible to do because the nine was in the way. So just if I can get just if I can get into this uh, into this direction with the cue ball here, stuck somewhere there, I can I can make the two in the corner, break open either of these two balls and improve the layout of the table. And if I if I'm able to hit the four, I will I will, I will move the four further down and, and I will improve my, my position for the five ball later. Okay, if I hit the seven, if I hit the seven, I move the seven out of the way. Uh, yeah, I, I will still be okay. So very, very unlikely that I'm going to get uh, snookered on, on this shot. And also, if I hit it wrong, I hit the six, I will be fine as well because the, if the cue ball hits the, this side of the six, cue ball will move here anyway. So I will have a shot on the two ball. So many things can, can go good. Many good things can happen on this shot. So first, chalk the cue. Use three, three brushes of the chalk. And you rotate the cue 60 degrees between every brush. Important. Because then you will brush the entire tip. The tip is 360 degrees. You brush you brush one time, you go from 0 to 180 degrees, 0 to 180 degrees, 
front to back to the other side of the tip rotate the rotate the Q 60 degrees 60 degrees choke it from one side to the uh, to the other rotate it, it, it again 60 degrees choke from one side to the other and now you have choked the entire tip 360 degrees yeah that's my secret for you that I that I revealed yeah only only three brushes remember remember that three brushes 60 60 degrees rotations of the cue between every brush and then you wait uh, then you don't chalk the cue for, for a long time okay this way you will uh, minimize uh, the risk of getting a kick where the where the chalk is getting stuck to the cue ball and it will cause uh, a strange hit between the balls and the ball will not go in if the balls are dirty the contact point makes it take uh, into another direction okay so let's begin here now you know how to do it so here we have ball in hand so i will make a draw shot draw shot and it will jump uh, i will attempt to make the cue ball jump in the air a little bit here so it, it will go more to the side before it will start drawing back okay so this, is a, this is a little trick shot here just a little trick shot here that i'm going to do okay i will try to attempt to hit the four ball if, if i don't i'm still okay whoops and i yeah oh i went another way i went another way and that is because the if the balls if the cue ball is dirty it will start to grip the cloth earlier and if the cue ball is clean it will slide to the side before starting to grip the cloth so this is the difference you need to you need to learn dirty versus clean cue ball and how they behave on the table and this time the cue ball was dirty it started drawing back earlier than with the clean cue ball with the clean cue ball I would have had a longer arc before it starts to speed back. And now, now I'm on, I'm on the two ball. I hit that wrong. I still, I'm still on the table. You see, I messed up very badly. Very bad skill. Very bad skill. I'm still on the table because I, I knew the possibilities here. If I would have failed, I have a shot. Okay, in in many ways. I was able to fail but still be on the table and have a, have, have a good shot okay and now i'm on the two ball here very nice here there are many many possibilities here i can either make it two in the corner or in that corner so what will happen if, if i shoot the two ball here this is a very tough shot and uh, i need to go three rails around the table for the, for the three ball and then I'm not guaranteed to have a good shot on the four. But if I choose the other way, I make it two in the corner, go one way, two rails, this way with the cue ball for the three. I might I might hit the four ball here. I might hit the seven, I might hit the six. I might improve my chances of getting a good good shot after. I might improve it greatly because I might move the six out of the way, so, so then I have the four a good shot on the four, I have a big area for the four there, but right now I just have this, this narrow area where I can stop the cue ball for, for the four. And if I'm straight on the four, I need to follow the cue ball here, somewhere here, close to the rail, and I don't like that. I don't like what, what, what I have here. So I'll just go around the table here, try to avoid these balls, but if I hit these balls, I might improve. The layout of the table so i will use low left spin low left spin my, my mask my mask is really bothering me low left spin is what i will use okay a lot of draw a lot of left spin yeah and i will do it again i hit that too thick this is a very very tough shot I will do it again. Hit it thinner this time. 
And the problem is that I'm, I'm elevated here. I'm elevating my Q. And I get a flat Marseille effect. And because of that reason, I hit too thick. I hit too thick on the tube ball because I elevate the Q because of a Marseille effect. So you need to compensate for that. If you elevate the Q, hit it a little thinner than normally. Like that. And now, move the four out of the way. Ooh. Look at that. I think uh, I am in a better shape now. Yeah, the four ball, the four ball does not go into the side pocket, but it goes into the corner. So the four is open here. I can be anywhere in, in this area for the four ball to be able to make it in the corner. So I actually improved my the layout of the table just a little bit. And here the only way is to go to this to a, to a rail and then back up again for, for the four. So I will use low left speed. I missed the shot and I made it look like that. If this was, if, if this was nine ball, I would still continue the, the rack. So here I will do it again. It's a very tough shot, these long, long, long shots. These long shots are very, very tough to do when shooting hard. Every time you shoot hard, it's going to make it a lot tougher. I need to move the mask a little higher up so I can see better. Ah, now, now I can see better. Slow left speed. There you go. And then, then back, back again. That's very nice. That's a very nice shot there. Now I have a good shot on the four. So uh, here I have a little angle on the four. Okay, so I, it, it, is, it is possible. It might be possible to make it into the side pocket, but it's going to be very tight. I, I, I don't want to risk. I don't want to risk hitting the six ball first. So I'm just going to make it in the corner. Uh, play position like this for the five. The problem here is that I might uh, I might hit the six and slow down the cue ball and get snooker than the nine. Or I, I might scratch here. So I would rather just be further away from, from the from the side pocket. So I'll go this, this direction with the cue ball. Somewhere in this area, okay? Somewhere on that line is where I, where I want to control the cue ball in. And I need to make sure that I will be able to see the five ball after this job. I want to make sure that the cue ball will go past this line here because then in the worst case, I can still cut it in, into the corner there. But I prefer, I prefer to go further here. So somewhere in this area is where I want to start the cue ball in. I don't want to go too close to the 10 and risk getting jacked up behind the 8 there. I want to go a little further away, somewhere in this area. So I, I'm planning for that. Now I just need to shoot hard enough. And I, I cheated the pocket a little bit, you saw. Cheated the pocket a little bit. Try to make the cue ball go further away. And that's, that's a common mistake many players do. They hit it too thin, they want the keyboard to go further away. But now the opponent is snookered here, so that is something you need to, you need to keep in mind that uh, if you miss the shot, are you going to leave the opponent uh, a safety or not? So on, on this shot, you are able to risk, you, you are able to risk uh, rattling in the jaws of the pocket because the file is in, in there, keyboard will, will end up there and the if you miss the shot, you, you will leave the opponent a, a safety. So this is something you need to keep in mind whenever you shoot. That are you going to leave the opponent an easy shot or not? If you are going to leave the opponent a safety, you, you are able to risk more when you shoot. If you, if you will leave the opponent a safety, you can risk a lot more. But if, 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 if you miss uh, and the opponent will get an easy shot, then you can't do many risks on the table. But on this, this chart, I could actually, I could shoot a little harder and risk rattling in the jaws of the pocket because I, I, I leave the opponent a safety anyway. So I will do it again. Ah. Okay, now, now it's better. Uh, little right spin here. 
Uh, yeah. Little low, low right speed. There you go. You saw, you saw I rattled in, into the jaws of the pocket. It went in. Okay. I thought it was, that, was, that was a risk I wanted to take because I wanted to get better position on the five. I don't want to start here with the cue ball. I don't want to stop here, I want to, it to go a little further, so I, I, hit, I hit the four ball a little thinner and it hit the rail first before going in. Okay, so now I have a good shot on the five, much better shot than I will be here because if I'm here on, on, the, on the five, the cue ball will scratch in the corner there. So the only way if, if I'm here is that I will go ar around the table, one, two, three rails. And that's a very, very tough shot, very tough shot. This is a much better shot because I'm fuller on the five. I can go, to, I can go hit the bottom rail there, come back up for, for the six ball, so much better. So here I will use uh, top right spin. Top right spin, because if, if I use pure top spin, the cue ball will hit the rail, come up this way. I might get snooker behind the eight, and I don't want that. So that's why I use top right speed. I hit, I hit the rail there, there, and then I will come this way. Okay, I will come that way. And uh, if I hit this shot shot wrong, I don't want to risk getting a snooker behind the eight. So I will use little softer speed. Try to start the cue ball somewhere there. Okay, hit the rail there, there, and start the cue ball there. And I will accept. Uh, uh, a shot on the six where the keeper will travel this way instead. I really, I really don't need to get be straight in on the six. That is completely unnecessary. If I'm completely straight in like that on the six, I, I really don't need that. Okay, I, I can be here on the six. I can make a soft, soft shot, start the keeper somewhere here for, for the seven. I don't want to risk getting snooker behind the eight. So that is, that is what I'm thinking about here. I'm planning ahead. Thinking about how can I how can I avoid getting snookered behind the eight? That is what I'm planning here. And also, many players they can scratch in the side here. They go one way, scratch in the side. So you want to avoid that as well. So there are two two things that I, I'm trying to avoid on this shot. Okay, so I I, I use top right spin. Top right speed. There you go. Perfect, you see? If I had shot that harder, I would be snooker behind the eight. You see that? And uh, I shot that a li little too hard, but I'm still fine. Because I selected a spot here on the cloth here that where I wanted the cubal to stop. If I had shot it too soft, I would have stopped here. I still have a good shot on the, on the six. If I shot too hard, I will still be here and have a good shot on the six, okay? So now I was uh, lucky. I was a little lucky here. I went too far and I'm full on the six. So now I can just make an easy stop shot. Easy stop shot here. Easy stop shot and then I will have this position on the, on the, on the set. The set, okay. So uh, you need to know how can you get from the 7 to the 8 and from the 8 to the 9? And you also need to look at where the 10 is. How can you go from, from the 9 to the 10? And I would like to just, uh, if, I'm, if I'm full on the 9, I can just draw back the cube a little bit, get position for the, for the, for the 10. And, uh, but that is really, that is, I really don't like it, that's not so perfect, okay? I want it, I want it to be perfect, okay? So if, if I'm here on, on the 7, I have a little angle on the 7. After making a 7, I, I want to push the 9 more, more there. Because then I have an easy, easy position shot from the 9 to the 10. You see, you see this, uh, oops, you see this line here? I want to be on some, somewhere on this line for, for the 10. And if the 9 is further here, position play from the, from, from the 9 to the 8 is much easier. Okay? So that's what I'm thinking about here. I, I will improve my odds if I push the 9 further, further towards that line. 
I will improve my eyes greatly. So here, here I will just make a stop shot. Make a stop shot, just low, low uh, speed. There, just stop shot. And now I have angle on the on the on the seven. And nor normally uh, people would just try to draw it back, try to try to avoid the nine. But I would just run into it. Okay, I would just hit the nine on purpose. And you see that I will have a shot on the eight ball after because the nine is at this line. So after I hit the cue ball, after I hit the nine with the cue ball, cue ball will stop here. I will have a good shot on the eight. Nine ball will move there. So I can just make a stop shot on the eight ball, have a great shot on the nine, and then a great shot on the ten. Okay, so time to chop the chop the cue. Three brushes. Okay, we want to chop about twice per rack. Chop the cue twice per rack, and three brushes uh, every time, and rotate the cue uh, sixty degrees between every brush. Okay, so now I will just. I will use low right spin because with right spin I will throw the nine ball closer to the corner with right spin and I will and the cue ball will go further back here. And if I would use left spin I would I might get snookered here because the, when the cue ball hits the nine, the cue ball will go to the left and the nine ball to the right. So I might get snookered if I choose the wrong spin. But if I use right spin, I will hit the nine on. I can hit the nine fuller, and the keyboard will go to the right after contact. So I will do that. I will just use. The, I need to put the mask tighter or something. Now, uh, so now I use low, low uh, right spin. Low right spin. I shoot quite soft. Yeah, you see, you see that. I hit the top side of the nine and push it, up, push it there a little bit, just to make it a little, little easier. But uh, I did not, I did not push it as much as I had hoped. But doesn't matter because I'm still, I'm, I still have a good shot on, on the eight there. So every time you shoot, you want to try to fix something, try to improve your chances, but you don't want to risk anything. Okay. You want the uh, low risk and high reward. That is what you want. Always low risk but high reward. And that is that is the strategy you want to use. So here, here I messed up on this shot. I played I played very bad, messed up on the shot. I still have a shot. You see, I still I'm still on the table, I have a good shot on eight, even when I messed up. And that is the strategy you need to use. And even if you mess up badly, you can still run the rack. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. We have an angle on the A, so the cube will go here. What kind of shot on the 9 do we want? If I'm here on the 9, yeah, I can just go one way. Get here for the, for the 10, that is possible. And here I would like to use uh, Right spin, low right spin, hit the rail there, come back a little here for the nine. This can be a risky shot. Uh, if, you are, if you are not good at these shots, you might scratch on the side. So you want, might want to play safe and just stop the cue ball short here. But then you will have a tough shot on the nine. Okay, you have a tough shot on the nine. And you might even scratch into this corner if on the nine. So you might as well risk the scratch on the eight ball instead, instead of risk it on the nine later. So you take the risk right now instead. So I will do that. Low right speed. There you go. And I went quite uh, further from the side pocket, but now I have a good shot. No risk of scratching into the into the corner because I, I'm I'm so full on the nine. So here I will just use top speed. Top spin. I think I need to change my mask. This is really bothering me. Bothering me with this mask. So here, ah, now, now it's very good. Here, a mis common mistake is to use inside spin to try to hit the red there and then change, change the angle here for the 10 
inside spin is very very difficult you want to avoid that okay especially on a long shot these are quite a long shot here you want to avoid inside spin and some some pros will just draw joy back here come up this way but very difficult especially when you shoot hard so i don't recommend that what what i do recommend is that you, you just go straight hit the rail there come straight here with speed and you want to accept the, that you will be frozen to this rail you can accept that because you, you might scratch in the corner you might scratch in, in the side you want to pick a point between these two pockets where you want to hit the cue ball here you want to stop the cue ball here this will maximize uh, your chances of succeeding and minimize the risk of scratching okay just just use the top spin little left spin here it, it, it depends on what kind of angle you have but on this shot it looks like just a hair of left spin just to be able to hit the point there and i want i want to use enough speed that the cue ball will stop somewhere here it will go in this 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 direction stop somewhere here because if i shoot too hard cue ball will end up somewhere here if i shoot too soft cue ball will end up somewhere here okay so i choose the spot in between these two boundaries okay so if it stops there or there i will be fine i can still make the 10 eh? but i uh, plan on making the cue ball stop in this location here okay you, you you never want to play for perfect position there like many players do if you play for perfection stop the cue ball here and you go too far you don't have a shaft on the 10 so i i plan on stopping the cue ball somewhere in this area here okay so i will do that top spin little left spin i'm the shaft i missed the shaft I will do it again, this is a tough shot. So if you're, if you're going to use inside spin, it's going to get much tougher. So you're going to miss, miss this shot for sure. Top spin, left spin. There, you see, you see that? Came into this area here like I wanted. Stopped too short, I stopped way too short. I, I really messed up on that shot. But I still have a good shot on the 10, you see that? Still have a good shot on the 10 even when i failed that shot i will do it again i will sh shoot a little harder this time yeah now i went too far went too far way too far i still have a shot look at that i i i missed that shot so now the memory is full so i need to go so i need to go so until next time Goodbye. Goodbye. There's nothing else in life than pool. Play pool. Play pool.